Okay, here we are at the tramways, about to get going. And for those of you who skipped the setup and just want to jump right in, all you need to know is here is our tiny little city. These are my plots of land. Those are Jen's plots of land. Uh, every round, we're going to start with an auction. Then we're going to build. Then we're going to do some administration. It's a deck builder. We've both got our starting deck of cards, which unlike most deck builders, our, car, our decks are very, very different based on choices we made during setup. Each of us has three bucks. Each of us has two workers, and we're ready to go. All right, although, actually, one thing to mention to the setup, people who watch setup, um, I showed you one way that the development deck can be used. There's a different way as well where those, um, the, those stacks of cards we had originally that we used to seed our own decks, they could actually stay as separate stacks, and when you get a new development card, you could pull any card you want out of a given stack, which gives you a little bit more control, but also introduces a memory element to the game that's kind of important. But I'm just playing, I mean, so there's two different ways you can handle this. This is just one of the ways we can do it, but it's the simpler way for me to show. And enough about that. Let's start playing. So, again, first thing we do every round. It's auction time. I'm the first player. I've got to do my opening bid, and I desperately want to avoid getting stuck with that void card. So, each of us have three bucks, but in my hand, I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got tons of cash. So, the choice I got to make here is how much money am I going to spend? Because the auctions in this game are very unique. This is a game where, okay, I'll make a bid and then somebody could raise me and then I could raise them and it keeps on going until everybody passes and whoever has the highest bid wins. But here's the thing. Your bids are cumulative. So if, say, my first bid is four bucks, I have to pay four bucks immediately. And then if Jen decides to outbid me and pays five, she pays five bucks immediately. And now if I want to raise her, I got to go up at least to six and I've got to pay six bucks. So now I've paid a total of 10. And then, it, um, you know, so as you can imagine, um, you know, unless you start out really small, but even heck, if I go to two and then Jen goes to three and then I want to go to four, that's actually six bucks I've spent. So this cumulative nature makes auctions incredibly tense. And that first bid you've got to make, you got to hope that's a slam dunk because if somebody raises you, well, it ain't going to be pretty. So, what am I going to do? I want to make, and, and I've got all the money. Heck, if, if I just gave up all of these cards to so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I wouldn't have to spend any of my money. I'd bid ten bucks, or heck, I could spend my money and bid thirteen if I wanted. There's no way Jen would be able to beat me, and I'd guaranteed avoid that card. But then for the rest of the round, I'd only have two cards in my hand, and I would not get very much stuff done for the rest of the round because I would have thrown all my cards away on money. So I don't want to do that. But here's the thing. Okay, I got this card out of the development deck specifically because I wanted to have the money. So I'm going to spend three. And I think I'm going to spend these three. This is like cash on hand. This is potential cash. But it all counts for the auction. So uh, let's see. I, I'm going to go to at least six. But is that enough? That, that still leaves me a lot of cards in my hand to be able to do stuff for the rest of the round. But I'm worried. I mean, Jen, I mean, I don't know how much money Jen's got, how many money cards she has. So I'm a little bit nervous about that, and I really don't want that void card. So I think I'm going to dump another card. Hmm. I probably want to dump another one of these twos. I mean, I could dump the one, but then I'm at seven, and if Jen goes to eight, I'm over. So I think I want to go to eight. So I'm going to bid eight just to avoid this void. Avoid the void. I'm paying through the notes. Because here's the thing. If I go to eight, and then Jen says, too rich for my blood, she'll just pass. And so she won't spend any cash, and she has all of her cards to do stuff. But again, I, but she'll be stuck with the void as well. So if I'm going to go straight to eight, I've paid three. There's six. Which really, Okay. Well, if I use this card, I will not be able to upgrade Link this turn. If I use this card, um, I won't be able. I won't be able to use it to build links to you know train links, or I won't be able to access lots B one or B two, B one or B two. Hmm. And actually, looking around, I think what I think I want to do is I want to build some links from J two over here to this residential building because I want to grab this land. If also, because that's the other thing too. If I'm the first player to build. I'm the first player to grab land and build track on it. 
And you can see Jen's got a lot of, of lots here, and I've got one. So if I could snag all this land, that would give me a huge leg up. So I want to hold on to my J2, which means I don't really care about building out a B1 or B2 or F2. F2 is kind of my weak one because it's way over here on the other side of this mountain range, which is very expensive to, to build through. Where's my F2? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna give I'm gonna spend my F2, which oh, but I might want to upgrade links this turn. <sighs> but I won't be able to, yeah, so I'm gonna spend this F2. So that is so I bid eight bucks. Okay, and then I've got the rest of my cards to either I could raise more, although I don't. I've only got five more bucks to raise, so I can't raise any more. So I'm gonna keep all the rest of these cards to do stuff during the building and the administration phases. All right, so now it's Jen's turn. And honestly, I don't even, I haven't even looked how much money she has. I, she probably doesn't have eight. She's got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Wow. I guessed correctly. Jen could afford to bid exactly eight. And I guarantee you, folks, if I had bid seven, she would have bid eight. She would have outbid me. I would have been stuck. And the important thing is, I would have thrown away eight bucks as well. Or no, if I if I'd done seven and then Jen had bid me, I don't get that seven back. So I uh, it was wise because Jen can't match my bid. She has to go to nine. She can't afford it. So since she can't afford it, she's not going to bid anything. She's going to pass, which means she keeps her money. She keeps all of her cards in her hand for the rest of the turn. But I have one first player. Hooray! Although I just blew through all of my money to do it. But there's an upside. I do not get stuck with this evil void card. So I'm going to take this ticket, which is not a great card. This, is a, is all, this card has no fundamental actions I can do, but it does have a ticket, so I can still use this to move, to, you know, to use it as a transportation ticket to move people around from one building to another, which is the name of the game. Everything we're doing is to try to get so we can move these passengers around and score points and make money. But every time I use this as a ticket, I have to increase my stress by one. And the stress meter, the more stressed you are, the more points you lose. So, I don't know if I'm ever going to use this card, but the important thing was I didn't get the void. But now, there is a downside. Winning an auction is phenomenal. You get to choose the card you want. You get first dibs on the board, but you, every time, whoever wins an auction increases their stress by one. Now, everybody starts at one stress, and I've only increased. I'm still at one stress. That If the game ended right now, I would lose one point to stress. But as my stress increases, if I get all the way up here at the end of the game, I would lose 21 points. So one stress is not a big deal, but I've got to watch that stress. If, I, if it gets too high, it could be incredibly debilitating. But anyway, so I took some stress to win, because that was a stressful auction. And But anyway, I've locked in first place. I grabbed the card I wanted, and I took some stress. Me Meanwhile, Jen has no choice. She has to take this void. It's bad enough that this completely useless card that does absolutely nothing is taking up space in her deck of cards because you never want to have junk cards in your deck. Um, but the bigger problem is whenever you collect a void card, you must eliminate one of your good cards and remove it from the game. So now Jen got a lousy card and she must throw away one of her good cards. And that is heartbreaking. If she, well, let's see, what's she gonna do? I think, hmm, she's got two cards that give her access to residential zones. So maybe, and you know, and plus she's also got this card that gives her access to industrial. So this card, kind of duplicates the functions of these two cards. So she might get rid of this, but if she does that, she owns lot F1, way up here in the top right corner of the, or the, I'm sorry, the, the south, the, what is this, the south east corner. If she tosses this card, she can never do any development with this empty lot. She can never build a building here. She can um, never deliver passengers here. So she's giving up a lot, but she has to give up a card, and she doesn't want to give up J4 because... J4 is in the thick of things. J4 is right over here. Um, you know, giving up this card would give up the ability to upgrade links and upgrade buildings. Giving up this gives up money, gives up money, gives up the ability to build buildings, gives up the ability to get workers. So of all of these, it hurts, but I think she's going to give up her F1 lot. She still owns it, but she can never develop it because of that void card. So the first auction is over. And we're done with that. Now we can move on to actions, to development or building, whatever phase number two is. I think it's development. Anyway, so once again, during this turn, we can use our cards to lay rail or upgrade rail, to build buildings, except Jen will never build a building here, 
or upgrade existing buildings that we've already built. We can't upgrade the buildings that are already on the board, but if we put buildings into our empty lots, we could later on upgrade them for big points. We can use our cards as tickets to make passengers move around, which is the main way you make money um, and points. Or if we don't want to use any of our cards, we can just make two bucks as, as kind of like a fallback. Hey, if nothing else, at least you can make money. So I'm the first player and here's the way it's going to work. I get to do three actions. Jen gets to do three of these actions, but we do it where I do an action, then Jen does an action, then I do two actions, then Jen does two actions. If we were playing with more players, action, action, action for the first round and then double action, double action, double action is the way it works. So I'm going to do my first action now. And remember, I think I was talking about this before. Since I'm here in J2, I want to try and snag up all of this terrain, which is going to put, um, because we're playing on a very tight map here. Remember, the map could have been bigger. It could have been a little bit more live and let live. But this is a very cutthroat map because it's so tight. I want to snag all of this terrain. So that means I need one, two, three. I need to play cards that give me the ability to lay up to um, three rail links, which, by the way, is the maximum number of links I can put on the board in a given turn. If I had a thing where I wanted to put four down, like, I don't know, I wanted to go from B1 to F2, one, two, three, four, five, six, I would only be able to do half of it. And then on another turn, I'd have to do the other half. But I need to do exactly three. So. Also, because I'm going to create a completed link between J2 and this leisure building, in addition to playing the cards that let me lay down my links, I also have to play a card that either lets me connect to J2 or and L. Now, I don't have any L cards at all. I don't have any leisure cards. So I am going to have to play my J2 because I'm going to play this for the J2 that lets me com complete a link here. If I wasn't completing a link, if I was only going to say build two spaces and not finish a link, I'd start a link but not finish it, then I would not have to play J2. But if I'm going to, to be able to successfully complete a link between two spaces, between two areas, specific areas, you got to play. So this round, I'm going to play this for J2. Let's see what else I'm going to play. And I need three. So I'm going to, mm. so I'm going to play this. Because playing this card has two functions, three functions. I could use this card as a ticket to move people. I'm not going to do that. I could use this card during the administration phase, which we're not in yet, to get more workers. I started with two workers. I need workers to lay track. So, but I'm not going to use it for that. Instead, I'm going to use it to lay two of the three lines that I need to put down. So there goes the two lines. So ba 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 ba, and ba da ba ba. And I need one more. Okay. So, and remember, I'm also going to play this card because to complete this, I had to either play a J2 or an L. So I'm going to play this for J2. Um, but here's the thing. Now, by playing this for J2, I'm giving up the opportunity to play it. Use it as a ticket to move people around. I'm giving it up as an opportunity to upgrade track. I can't upgrade track either. But if I wanted, I can use a card for multiple icons on it if I take more stress. And I think, I think I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take an additional stress. That means I'm using this card for two things. I'm using it for my final link and I'm using it for the J2. And so I took some extra stress, which means I'm up to negative two points now at the end of the game, but I have completed a link. Now at the end of the game, for every completed link you've got like this, that's worth three points. So I basically just made three points, but I won't score till the end of the game. More importantly, I've now set it up so that I can move passengers around to start making money and victory points as well. And I have kind of gobbled... Now, I don't necessarily own this plot of land. Jen can still put her own rail lines on this space, but I own this exit and this exit. So if Jen wanted to put track here, she can only put it cross purposes. So she could still do something. So she could say, come out of J1, go this way, and connect J1 to J3, but she cannot connect J1 to L, as an example, because I've snagged all that land. Right. And so I you only had to use two cards because I stressed myself to get all this stuff done. And that was remember, it, it, when during the action round, I do an action, which I just did. I completed a link. Then Jen does an action. Then I will get to do two more actions, and Jen will do two actions. So now it's tur turn. It's time. Let's see. Oh, and these are the cards I did not play. Now it's time for Jen, who has all of her cards because she didn't use any of them. Although this void isn't going to do her any good at all. So, but she's still got 
Um, one, two, three, four, five, six good cards um, that she could use to do stuff. And let's see now. She's not going to upgrade or links or buildings because she hasn't built any links or buildings. She could build a building, which will immediately score her a point, for example. And um, But if she wants to build a building on a lot, she has to play this. Plus, she would have to play this card to build on J4 or J3 or J1. And so maybe... And in a two-player game, there are very limited opportunities to build these buildings. And when you build a building, not only do you put a building on your lot, and not only does a new passenger appear on your lot, but you get to add another card to your deck. So maybe Jen wants to build a building right away to make up for the fact that she got this crappy void card, noid, void card, like avoid the noid, of the, and she had to throw this card away. So maybe Jen wants to start off particularly because I just grabbed all that terrain, Jen will start off by building a building, which means in the administration phase, she will not be able to make a dollar. So she's playing this card. She can build any one of these buildings, but where is she going to build it? J3, J4, or J1. Whichever one she builds in, that means she's giving up the opportunity to make money or lay track or do something with this one residence zone. So... Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> let's see. I think Jen will, play, will build a building in J3. So she just spent, for her first action, she spent two of her cards, and here's the rest of her deck that she'll use in the second half of the actions when she gets to do two more actions. Right. So she's building at J3. Does she want to build? Well, now it's interesting. There is only, since this map started with no commercial, this is Jen's chance to build the only commercial building that will ever exist in this game. And this is her chance to get this card and add it to her deck, which gives her the opportunity to interact with residential buildings. But you know what? Jen can already act, interact with residential buildings, so I don't think she needs that. She can already interact with um, industrial buildings as well. I think Jen in J3 is going to... And now this is unique. There's one um, leisure, commercial, and residential, but there are two... No matter what, no matter how many players, there are always at least two industrial buildings. If we were playing a three-player game, there'd be um, two of each of these buildings. If we were playing a four-player game, there'd be three of each. But in a one in a two-player game, there's one of each, except for industrial. There's always two. Jen is going to build one of these industrial buildings at J3. And she still keeps this marked because this is still her land. She puts a new guy in here. She grabs a new card, and this doesn't go to her discard pile, it goes directly to her hand. She has this immediately, isn't a card available to use? And here's why Jen chose this, because when you build an industrial building, not only do you, do, you get a new card, you get some, you know, a new building that you can upgrade, you increase your hand size. Jen's hand size just went from 7 to 8. If Jen builds the other industrial building, then she can increase her hand size to nine, and I will never get to increase my hand size. So that was Jen's first action. All right. So now we go on, and now I get to do two actions. Jen gets to do two more actions, and I've got four cards left. What do I want to do? Hmm. Well, I, I don't have any... I, I could build a building myself. I could build a building in B1 or B2. And here's the thing. If I don't build a building, Jen might build the other industrial building in one of her other spaces because I don't know what other card she's got in her hands. Maybe um, when she did her initial draft, maybe she got another card that would let her... We both have this. This is one... We both had this card. This is one of our starting cards that everybody has. So for all I know, Jen cannot build another building. But during the initial draft, she might have gotten the chance to build another building. I don't remember. Can she? Actually, as it happens, she can't, um, so that's beside the point, but I'm not sure of that. So, if I want to make sure I increase my hand size, I better do it now. Unless I want to take the gamble that Jen can't do it, and if I win the auction in the next round, then I could go ahead and do it. But what else am I going to do? Well, um, I could, I've got two more track I could lay, and, although here's the problem, I could lay this track. Oh, whoops, oh, I forgot one thing. Every time you lay track, not only do you have to play the cards, which you saw me do, and in some case take some stress, but for every time you lay track, you have to give up one worker. So I forgot, I'm down to one worker. So I do have one worker. I could use that other worker to lay two more track, but this would have to be an incomplete link. Unless I stressed myself, in which case I could lay the two track plus activate the B1 or B2 so I could have a complete link to B1 or B2. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, that's that's interesting. 
Now, if, uh, actually, I'm, I'm looking at what I could do if, um, oh, hmm, okay, yeah, so I could do that. I'm thinking if I lay track, if I, I play this to lay track and I play this for B1, so I'm only laying one piece of track and I don't want to stress myself anymore because the more I stress myself, the worse it gets, I could just lay a single piece and remember, I'd be going to B1 like this. And then I would be connecting Jen's building with her passenger to my lot, which means in a future turn, because here's the thing, this building belongs to Jen, but the passenger does it. The passenger will happily ride on anybody's rail line. So I could get in here so that I could benefit from this passenger before Jen gets a chance to say, cre create some line that would let her, let her move this passenger over to one of her lots over there. So I could do that. And that would be, I say I'm doing two actions. That would be my first action. And then my second action, hey, I could give up one of these cards as a, uh, as a ticket. But unfortunately, I wouldn't have my B1 anymore that I could use to move this guy here. So it's a bit of a long shot. I don't know if I'd actually be able to get that guy delivered. Hmm. But, uh, but still, that is kind of cool. Or I could stress myself, do two of these. Um, and then, um, you, know, and, you know, do two plus stress myself to build to B1 or B2. And that means I could create a line between my own two buildings. Or I'm sorry, they're not buildings yet. They're just vacant lots. And once I start building buildings in these spots and that creates passengers, I could start having these passengers go back and forth between here. Hmm. Or, or again, I don't have to build link lines. Maybe, but you know, here's the thing. I'm totally broke. I burned through a lot of cash. So remember, one of the things I can do is I don't have to play cards. I could just get two bucks. So for my two actions, one of them could just be get two bucks. And then the other one could be, you know what? I don't want to miss out on an industry either. So I think I am going to build in. Oh no. Oh no. Ugh. See, here's what I want to do. I want to build in J2 because I want to build an industry and put it right next to Jen's so that this becomes one big industrial building. But I can't because I've already given up my J2, so I can't build on J2. But I, because, but I want to make sure I get an increased hand size too because if I don't do it, Jen's probably going to snag it. So my two actions are make some money and build a building. Oh, by the way, when Jen builds a building, I forgot. She scored one point. And now I'm going to build a building. I score one point. It shows it right here. I'm going to build a building, and which means I'm giving up a chance to make one dollar. And I will build a building in, in B1. All right. In B1. There we go. So and now what? I, and I'm going to build the other industrial while I can uh, to increase my hand size so I don't miss out on that. And now no more industrials can be added to the world. So those are my two actions. I made some money. I built a building and, uh, and then I've still got two cards left over. This card isn't going to do anything for me during administration, but during administration, since I didn't use this, I'll be able to make some money later on. And so now Jen gets to do two actions. And so her void once again is going to do her no good. And ideally she'd like to save this till the end of the round so she can make money off of it. So if she doesn't want to play this, which means being able to do stuff out of J1 uh, so she can make some money at the end of the turn, what uh, is she going to want to do with these? Well, she should probably lay some track as well. And now that she's made this new building, I think she wants to connect her building to one of her empty lots. So she will... All right. So that means she needs one, two to be able to connect like this and, and cross over mine. Right? So she will play her J4. So she's going to make a, a link to J4 over here. Oh, wait, no, no, no. She could play this card for industrial. Or here's another thing she could do. She could play this card to, uh, oh, no. She could play up this card to upgrade the building she's already built. But she would, since this is an industrial, she'd have to play an I for industrial. She doesn't have any industrial cards, but she could play this to upgrade and then stress herself to activate the I. She could upgrade this and get three points. But I don't think she's going to do that right now. Instead, she is going to play this card because she is going to complete a link between an industrial spot and J4. Yeah, okay. So she's playing that, and so she needs two rails... And so she'll play this card for one rail. 
She'll play this card for two rail. Now this card, she can play it for one rail or she can stress herself to get two or she can stress herself twice to get all three. But she's only playing one and so that's two rails and she also played an industrial card so that means she can complete a link between J4 and the industrial building she just built. So that was her first action. Okay, and now she has one card left. Um, and right, so she could use this to build two more long. Oh, and she just built some rail, so she had to lose a guy as well. She spent a worker. And so now she's got this card. She could use it uh, as a ticket, but unfortunately she doesn't have another card to play that say is where the ticket would go. She would need to have a ticket that says J4 so she can move this guy to J4 and make some money and score a point. But, so she's not going to use it as a ticket. If she waits, she can use this to get a worker back during admin or she could play it right now to put down two more lines and give up her other worker. But they would be incomplete lines because she doesn't have a card to finish a line. So she's not going to play this card Oops, and I, I, she played all these cards. I put them in her discard pile. She played that and that for the two lines. She played this for the eye. So, um, although she still has this. But no, she is not going to play the last card in her hand. So Jen built a line, and then for her second action, she's going to make two bucks as well so that she can stay ahead of me in money so that she can win the auction next round. So now, going into next... All right, so... I've done my three actions, Jen's done her three actions, and now finally, we're going to go to admin. And we can, everybody can do this simultaneously. Look at our cards. I'm going to play this card during admin to make myself two more bucks. And I'm not going to play this card, but this card is basically, I don't want to use this because it'll create more stress as a ticket. So you can, every round, you can discard one card for free. You can discard multiple cards that you didn't use, but it costs you money. One for every for your second, your third, and your fourth, and your fifth. But to discard just one card is free. I'm going to discard this and hope I don't draw it next turn. Although, wait, what's my hand size? Well, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, well, actually, it doesn't really matter because my hand size is eight. I'm going to draw all eight cards anyway. But if I had increased my hand size and next turn I was only going to draw seven cards, well, if I still had this in my hand, I'd only get to draw six. So um, discarding can matter, but since I increased my hand, it doesn't matter that much, but I'll just discard it anyway. So Jen, meanwhile, she still had three cards left over. She's going to discard this void and hope never to see it again, but she probably will. She's going to play this to make two more bucks because she saved it, didn't use it during her building phase. So Jen's crazy loaded. And she's going to play this to get her worker back. And so Jen's got two workers. She's got a lot more money. And that was it. Now, at the end of the round, we um, basically, if anybody has 21 stress, they lose a point. We, uh, if any... People on industrial spaces, if they move on a rail, they disappear. They're removed from the game. And at the end of this round, we would refill any yellow industrial spots. But as it is, nobody delivered any yellow industrial people. So we're not going to refill. Then this goes away. We move on to, this, to round two. And now we're ready to begin again. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot. I forget this every time. So easy to forget. After the... Um, it, they really... They really should put a reminder of this on the player aid. After the auction was over, we should have immediately, all the way back at the beginning of this round, revealed what the next cards were going to be so that we knew what was going to be available in the auction. Because knowing what was coming might have affected how much money we tried to have on hand. Because if another void came out, you better believe both of us were going to be saving a lot of money to avoid it. Now as it happens, no bad. these are both good cards. These are both nice cards. This one I think is better because we don't have many commercial opportunities. So this one is a little bit more flexible. But they're both good cards. But that's an important thing. After you finish the auction, immediately immediately reveal the next auction. I really do hope they put that on the player aid because it's so easy to forget. But anyway, we finished the first round. It's the second round. I'm the first player. I've got to make the opening bid to get first choice on what these are, to get first build out here. And, oh, but one more thing. At the beginning of the round, we have to draw. I have to draw eight cards. It just so happens my entire deck is eight. Jen, she has nothing. So she's going to draw. And I think, does she have eight cards as well? She has nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, we both have eight. So we both draw. But, um, you know, 
we, you know, we would shuffle, we would draw, but since we both increased our hand size, we're both going to have full access to our decks. Although Jen does have a lousy card in her deck. So we're ready to go. We've got our decks ready to go. We can use that for money. We've got our money on hand. We're going to start the bidding. And if you want to see that, folks, this is where you hit the I to go to the extended playthrough and, and watch me do another round, maybe another two, so I can start building, so we can start actually getting passengers moving on the rails. And the interesting thing is, in this game, I can move passengers on my rails. I can move passengers on Jen's rails. There's a lot of stuff still to show. If you want to go to the extended playthrough, you can hit the I or alternatively, you can go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two. One.